Okay. Let's go. The dogs. Break, guys. Come on. Dust, let's go. How to prevent marking. I've been doing it to Saint the whole time because he marks a lot too. So I just catch him before. <laughs> and now if he's up ahead of me, I don't mind a little bit. But if he's slowing down the pack, let's go guys. D, let's go. Good. Dust. Good. If they're slowing down the, the, the movement to sniff, which usually turns into marking for this one, um, then I speed them along. And I only did that a few times with Saint. I think he's getting it. <laughs> but it's not a correction. It's just like a little tap on the shoulder. Just as if you had a leash, you give them a little tug. Like, hey, move along. Let's go. If I want to give them a break and really let them sniff and get into a spot that's safe, that I know there's nothing lingering in the bushes, <laughs> then I'll do it, you know? Absolutely. But break, buddy. There you go. But just keep that in mind. Even if you let your dog stop you every five steps, which Dusty used to when we first got him, you'll be living that life forever. <laughs> you'll never get anything done. You'll never get anywhere. And I see people on the walks doing that. It takes them 30 minutes to go around the block. I don't want to exaggerate. 20. And they wonder why their dog still has so much energy and isn't fulfilled. <laughs> They're sniffing. Isn't that enrichment? Eh, a little, kind of, sort of. You're just looking at it wrong. But anyway, just a little tip. Also, it's a little heavy. I need to find a thinner one, but using a biothane, I'm gonna try to stick to those on hikes. So much easier to clean. Oh, good job. I seen if he was about to mark. <laughs> and uh, doesn't get filled with wet and dirt. Wait, I still have an easy collar for weight. That's all right, we'll get there. Yeah, I said it and then I paused, I gave him a chance, paused a little too long because I was like, please do it, my camera's out. <laughs> he didn't, so I tapped. Oh, I got a person up ahead. Dogs, come, come, I move back a little, good. Heel, dust, so Saint, heel. Saint, come, come here, buddy. I know you're not quite ready for that yet. He's like, this is my second hike. Heel, good. So, this is what we always do, passing by people. Dogs, I'd be up in that corner right there with the dogs behind me. Heel, because I don't trust other dogs. Hello. Good morning. Morning. Let's go. Say, no, let's go. Good. So, what was I at? A nine? I wish I'd been a little higher. Dogs, break. Break. Go, go, go. Saint's still figuring out this pattern. Um, especially a dog that's insecure is not allowed to just reach out and sniff anyone he wants. Because if he can reach out and invade their space... I mean, think about how value, like how powerful a dog's nose is. He doesn't need to reach out. So if he invades their space, but then when he meets a guy and they bend down to pet or those women bit down to touch him, he would feel violated. And that's such a mixed message. So for me, he doesn't get to invade their space without permission. And I don't let them invade his space. And he'll see that. If they had bent over, I would have said, oh, please do not, do not uh, pet. Wait. We're training. Good dogs. That was all verbal. Way to go, Saint. Let's go. Oh, yeah. So I've been playing around practicing with uh, with weight. And he'll do it without e-collar. Break, guys. Break. He'll do it without e-collar in the shade. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> not in the sun. So that's pretty funny. But still. Still learning. Got to listen to it all the time, no matter what. At least his wiliness is gone. He paces a lot and circles a lot. He's really kind of all over the place. Wait, good boy. Just tapped it at four. I'm just cueing him now. I don't want to keep kind of setting him up. He's, this is too new for him. So every time I say it, I'm just, 
giving them a little tap on the shoulder at a four five. But anyway, guys, wait. If you, Dakota, break. If you guys saw my trail video with Bailey, let's go guys. You would have noticed that it's really common in the beginning stages for the dogs to stick to you like glue. Well, when we first started, this, <laughs> well, he's getting it now. When we first started this, he, uh, wait. He's gotta wait before he hits the end of the line because I want this to be assimilated off leash, even though I know he can feel the drag. Um, it's still assimilated. Anyway they will really stick to you like glue because you keep communicating with with them. So they're like, wait. So they're like, well, maybe I should just stick with you. Maybe that's what you want. And it takes time. It takes them building context. Oh, I have to come to you every time I see you see a person. Oh, I have to come to you, you know, every time I see a dog. Or I just have to listen to wait, but it doesn't mean I have to come all the way back to you. Like that just takes time. You know, a few let's goes and they're like, oh, you want me to hang right next to you? It's like, no, I just don't want you to linger over something. All of that, wait, takes time to uh, build up context, practice. Okay, so anyway, uh, me having my pack helps a lot because in the beginning he was sticking to me after a few let's goes for starting to mark. He thought, well, maybe she just wants me to hang right next to her. And it took the dogs venturing out. He knows we're on the way back. He's like, this is enough for me. Wait. He's, aw, is that what you wanted? <laughs> He's like, water break. Come here, bud. Sit. We will do a water break. Sit. Good. Down. Dogs, come. Good. Down. Good. Good job. Dusty kind of knows. He just doesn't have to do all that obedience nonsense unless I look right at him and, and really project my energy towards him. That is a video for another time.